So I have to admit, I avoided using Trezor for years after I first got into cold wallets. It wasn't until the safe models came out that I decided to take the plunge and I bought all of them. I just felt that the Trezor Model 1 and Model T were outdated for their time. I mean, for years now, there have been wallets that you can use with both your phone and computer, yet for some reason, Trezor has remained mainly a desktop wallet. No Bluetooth, no iOS compatibility, no mobility. But today, that finally changed. This is the Trezor Safe 7, and it's the first Trezor wallet that works seamlessly on both your mobile and desktop devices. And that's not the only thing that's new. Actually, everything is new. Trezor went from being the most outdated wallet on the market to one of the most future-proof wallets and it all starts with the design. Compared to the old Trezor models that were completely or partially plastic, this one is a huge step up. The Safe 7 is Trezor's first aluminum unibody model, meaning the entire frame is one solid piece of anodized aluminum, no screws, no split lines, just seamless strength. And it comes in multiple colors, charcoal black, green, and Bitcoin orange. Now, one important note about the Bitcoin orange model is that it is a Bitcoin-only wallet, so it only supports Bitcoin and nothing else. But it's not all metal. A completely metal wallet would actually cause problems because it would block the wireless connections. To avoid that, the back is made from reinforced glass, so there's no interference. And how they do this is actually really interesting. Using a process called non-conductive vacuum metalization, Trezor vapor deposited metal onto the glass in 14 ultra thin layers. Each layer actually has its own unique properties, giving the glass that insane reflective look and allowing all the wireless features to still work properly. The touchscreen is also the largest Trezor has ever made. It's 2.5 inches, which is 62% larger than the Safe 5, it pushes 700 nits of brightness, which is close to iPhone territory at around 1000 nits typical max brightness. And since it's made with Gorilla Glass, it's scratch resistant, durable, and even a bit fingerprint resistant. And speaking of durability, the Safe 7 is Trezor's first IP54 rated wallet, so it's both dust and water resistant thanks to its fully enclosed design. Along with its fully custom display, the Safe 7 gives off a super satisfying haptic feedback anytime you interact with the screen. The best way I can describe it is that it feels more bouncy than vibrating, and I like it. The only small annoyance I notice is that when you first touch the screen, if you're trying to scroll, it still triggers the haptic feedback. It's not really a problem, it just feels a bit awkward at first because I'm not used to it, but it doesn't take long to get used to, and if you really don't want the haptic feedback enabled, you can disable it in settings. Now, with a display this bright and the powerful haptic feedback, you might be wondering, how's the battery? Because remember, this is the first Trezor wallet to use a battery, and it's surprisingly pretty good. And let's be real, it's not like you're watching YouTube on it, it's used to sign crypto transactions, so even if you had all the features enabled and the screen brightness maxed out, even if you got a couple hours of constant use out of it, that's more than enough time to do what you need to do. That said, I did notice with the haptic feedback and Bluetooth enabled, along with the screen brightness completely maxed out, the battery drains a lot quicker, but it's not really a big deal and you probably won't notice it with day-to-day -day use. But to help with battery life, not just day-to-day -day use, but long-term durability, Trezor went with a LifePo 4 battery. This type lasts way longer than standard lithium batteries. You get about four times the charging cycles and it holds power for years, even if it's been sitting in a drawer. So it basically lasts four times longer than batteries used in most other hardware wallets. Also, the Safe 7 supports wireless charging. So if you have one at home, you can use that to charge it. Or if you order your Safe 7 using the link in the description, you'll get Trezor's wireless charger for free. Unfortunately, I didn't order mine using my own link, so I didn't get the free wireless charger, but that's okay because it still comes with the USB-C cable and I can charge it that way. I guess. So from the design alone, I think it's pretty clear that every engineering choice was made to future-proof the Safe 7 to ensure that it lasts for years to come. But we're just getting started. It actually gets even better. So let's look at the user interface next, because if your goal as a company is to create a truly future-proof wallet, it needs to be easy to use, especially considering the amount of people who are entering the crypto space every day, which is already a complicated, complex space to begin with before you mix in hardware wallets. Previously, setting up a Trezor wallet, managing your crypto, doing firmware updates, all those things were done mainly on desktop. 
Technically, you could use an Android phone, but it wasn't very seamless. The older models needed a physical connection just to power on and communicate, which just made the whole process clunky. So the fact that the Safe 7 finally has Bluetooth is a massive upgrade for usability. I can't emphasize enough how much more enjoyable it is to set up this wallet using Bluetooth on my iPhone compared to the old method where I had to go to Trezor's website, download Trezor Suite, plug in my wallet, it's just not efficient. Now I just downloaded the Trezor Suite app on my phone and set it up entirely over Bluetooth, including the firmware update. It even lets you run the genuine check to make sure the device hasn't been tampered with. So this is arguably the biggest upgrade the Safe 7 brings. And if you've ever used Trezor Suite on your computer, nothing's really changed. The Safe 7 works exactly the same as the older models. But I really wanna focus on the Trezor Suite mobile app because that's where the upgrade is for this wallet. Before setting it up, you just need to connect your wallet to your phone. Trezor built their own Bluetooth protocol for this and we'll talk about that later, but the short version is it makes the connection super secure. When I first connected the wallet, it asked me to verify that the pairing code matched on both screens, then had me confirm the connection on the Safe 7 itself. After that, it gives you a one-time code you enter on your phone and you're good to go. Once I got through that, the setup was actually really smooth. What I liked most was that Trezor includes an optional tutorial if you've never used one of their wallets before, or even a hardware wallet in general, it walks you through the basics and gives you helpful tips along the way. It kind of feels like the app is guiding you step by step without overwhelming you. After setup, everything works just how you'd expect. Seamlessly. Adding tokens only takes a couple taps in the app and confirming actions on the wallet feels natural. Sending and receiving crypto is super easy now. When I hit receive, the address pops up on both the wallet and the app so I can double check it's correct before copying it. And when I send crypto out, I just confirm the address on the safe seven, tap send in the app, and that's it. The transaction is complete. And I can do this from literally anywhere now since it's a mobile wallet. You can also buy, sell, and swap crypto directly in the app, which makes it feel more like a true all-in-one app, which is the kind of thing most people actually want from their cold wallet. But considering Trezor had almost no experience with wireless tech before this, the Safe 7 makes it look like they've been doing it for years. Also before this, the iOS app was view only. So taking that same app and turning it into something as seamless as this one with their first ever wireless product is a huge win. I'd say the Safe 7 now ranks at the top of my list for ease of use, and that's after testing 30 different hardware wallets. But it doesn't matter how easy a wallet is to use if it's not secure. So let's jump into the security features next because Trezor has introduced a few new terms that they're advertising as big deals, and that's not always the case. The first term is something we've never seen from a hardware wallet brand before, quantum ready. Trezor claims the Safe 7 is the first ever quantum ready hardware wallet. Now, let's pause for a second because very few people on this planet even know what quantum computing actually is, myself included. But here's what we do know. Bitcoin and other crypto projects are not ready for the quantum threat, mainly because it's not a threat today, so it's not a priority for most developers. But that doesn't mean some teams aren't already working on post-quantum solutions to make crypto more secure for the future. In fact, post-quantum cryptography already exists, which is exactly why Trezor implemented two major modifications to the Safe 7 to future-proof it. The first change is the bootloader. This is the small piece of code responsible for running your device's firmware. The bootloader is now signed using a post-quantum algorithm, which is immune to quantum computers. So if quantum computers ever do become a real threat, Trezor can safely push quantum-proof updates to the Safe 7 through a simple firmware update. The second modification applies to the authenticity check, which verifies that the device you're using is genuine. That check is now also signed using a post-quantum algorithm. So even if quantum computers do become a threat earlier than expected, Trezor will always be able to confirm that that you're using an authentic device. But just to be clear, the Safe 7 is not quantum proof. There's a big difference between quantum proof and quantum ready. What Trezor is saying is once those post quantum algorithms are released, they'll be able to implement them into the Safe 7 easily. Whereas for other wallets on the market right now, that might be a lot harder or maybe even impossible. So this is more of a preventative measure. Okay, now the second major security update and term associated with the Safe 7 is a 100% open source and fully auditable secure element chip. And the secure chip has one job 
protect your keys. But Trezor's open source and auditable secure chip addresses one main issue in the hardware wallet space. That issue being most hardware wallet manufacturers are using closed source chips. That means if there's ever a vulnerability found in the chip, the company can't disclose this to the public. They can't tell their customers. They can't communicate with the security community. They have to keep it private because they signed a non-disclosure agreement with the chip manufacturer. And for Trezor, that has always been an issue. Since creating the first hardware wallet ever back in 2013, Trezor has remained 100% open source and the Safe 7 is no exception. And if I had to guess, that's probably why the old Trezor models didn't have a secure chip and they didn't introduce secure chips until 2020. 23 when the Safe 3 came out, and even that chip is 100% open source created by Infineon. But now with the Safe 7, they've taken things to a completely new level. They created their own secure chip called the Tropic Square One. Because it's 100% open source and auditable, thousands of security experts all around the world can review it publicly, and if there are any vulnerabilities found, they can be fixed a lot quicker, making the chip more secure in the long run. Another really cool feature of the Tropic Square One chip is its internal alarm. So let's say a hacker steals your wallet, opens it up and tries to extract your keys. The chip will actually detect this, set off the alarm and completely erases your keys from the chip. That way it leaves the hacker with basically a useless wallet. Not only that, but the Safe 7 still uses the Infineon chip from previous Safe models. So it has a dual chip architecture, which basically just means it has double the protection. So yeah, Trezor really nailed the physical security with the Safe 7. But what about wireless security? Now that the Safe 7 has Bluetooth, they have to ensure that that is equally secure as the hardware. And honestly, Bluetooth attacks are pretty rare as is. The person would have to be in close proximity to you during the transaction when you're using Bluetooth. But when it comes to hardware wallets, there's no room for error. That's why Trezor just went all out and built a fully encrypted end-to-end -end protocol called Trezor Host. In simple terms, it acts like a shield, protecting the wallet from any attackers and keeping communication between your phone and the Safe 7 completely secure, even in the rare case that someone tries to compromise your Bluetooth connection. Taking all that into account, I'd say these new security features are a big deal because they actually make the Safe 7 more secure, future-proof, and they do it without sacrificing usability or Trezor's core trustless values. Of course, the Safe 7 still includes all these standard security features we all expect from a cold wallet, like pin protection with an automatic device reset after 10 failed attempts. You also get the option to set up a standard 12 or 24 word seed phrase or Trezor's own custom 20 word seed phrase, which advanced users can later upgrade into a multi-share seed phrase for extra protection. And if you want even more privacy and security, it supports using a passphrase also known as a hidden wallet. But what about downsides? Because there's no such thing as a perfect hardware wallet. And even though the Safe 7 is easily the best wallet Trezor has ever put out, it carries one of these same downsides as all the previous models, coin support. Now, some people actually prefer wallets that support less cryptocurrencies, mainly because the new projects coming out today are basically all scams. But if you're someone who likes investing into newer projects and taking higher risk, then the Safe 7 and its limited coin support might be a deal breaker for you. And don't get me wrong, it still supports many of the popular blockchain networks and coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Solana, XRP, and others. But compared to wallets like Tangem or even Ledger, the Safe 7 is definitely more limited. Personally, I'm fine with that. It supports all the cryptocurrencies that I hold. My only complaint used to be that Trezor didn't support Solana, but back in 2023, they added it, so it's all good now. So I'm impressed. Out of all the wallets that were released this year, I was most excited for the Safe 7. And now that I finally got my hands on it, I can confirm that it lives up to the hype. And for $250, which is the mid-tier range for other brands like Ledger, I think this is a steal. I mean, this is a true masterpiece. Next, make sure to check out my full Safe 7 setup and user guide in this next video. And remember the link in the description will get you a free wireless charger if you decide this wallet is for you. Peace out, God bless.